Today, we're gonna to be discussing my final thoughts on the Thermaltake Core P3, and I'm gonna explain why I am not using it. You see, this is a case that I wanted to love, but I can't. And unfortunately, like, there's just so much that's getting in the way of me truly liking this case, to the point that I actually just cannot recommend it. So, Today we're going to be discussing that and a little bit more and kind of like my history with Thermaltake and why honestly like I probably will not be buying any of their cases willingly ever again. So to be completely honest I don't do case reviews the same way that most people do them. I don't really have very much data to go on because I can't really control too much in my environment right now. Uh, currently, we are located in an apartment uh, that we base our, every single one of our videos out of. And as much as I love this apartment, it is definitely not controlled. And it really can't be controlled. It's got these amazing vaulted ceilings which creates this awesome depth and sound but at the same time, it also makes it very difficult for us to control things with thermals. That being said, we're talking about a completely open case here, so we're really not gonna have too much on that data. If you do want that data though, I will recommend Gamers Nexus as they are a much better resource for that. So what we're gonna be focusing on is specifically the initial impressions of the case, the build quality, actually building in the case, its flaws, and kind of why I don't like it. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it. My initial impressions of the case were actually pretty positive. It has surprisingly thick metal all around on it. I mean, Thermal Take really didn't have to skimp out all that much since it's a $100 case with very few pieces. I mean, it's got a very, very thick piece of tempered glass. So the whole thing is actually made out of some pretty thick steel panels, which is actually really nice. It has a sort of quality to it that actually feels pretty great. Pulling it out of the box, it comes in a very interesting form factor for a case, but the box isn't that much smaller than your traditional case box. That being said, every piece of this case feels quality. Like there are these giant metal dowels that feel solid. There's the steel paneling of the case itself, which feel great. It honestly doesn't feel like junk until you start to unpack these smaller pieces of metal. You see, there are actually support pieces all throughout this case for GPU, PSU, anything that kind of protrudes off the case. And this is actually where I think Thermaltake really cheaped out the most. I actually bent my PSU holder on accident at some point and I don't even know how. And if I did it while building it, it honestly took too little pressure to do so. Not to mention when I assembled the case originally, I actually assembled it in the vertical GPU layout, which then I decided against due to the fact that this was going to be my test system and I was going to be pulling hardware in and out. And Unfortunately, due to how PCIe riser cables work, I would actually be adding a variable that I could not control when it comes to the frames per second. And so, unfortunately, I thought, okay, maybe vertical layout is probably not a good idea. So I went to the standard horizontal layout that we're used to. I guess it's technically still vertical, but digressing a little bit, the traditional layout that we are used to on a GPU. When I did that, I actually noticed that the finish of the case was already rubbing off. And I was like, that didn't, wasn't mounted for very long. It was actually mounted for less than 48 hours with pretty standard amounts of pressure. So my opinion of the case actually diminished almost immediately after I had posted a video where I had built the case. Because it took, it was an experience. It was something completely different. I also then noticed a couple of other weird flaws. For one, not all of the holes are grommeted. In fact, actually the holes that you're more likely to use are not grommeted in any way. That was kind of bizarre. There also were these bizarre SSD mounts where fans should be for a radiator because there's a radiator intake slash exhaust on the side 
but there's way too much metal there. It actually was very bizarre and very perplexing because if those weren't there, you could actually conceal the radiator on the inside of the case and you could put the fans on the outside and you'd actually create a situation where you'd have no interference with GPU clearance. So there were a couple of weird oddities with it. And honestly, at that point, my opinion of the case had started to diminish a little bit. It wasn't until I tried to create a water cooling loop because this case begs for a water cooling loop that I ran into my first real issue with it. Thermal Take on their website and in the manual claim that this will support up to a 420 millimeter radiator. When we put a 420 millimeter radiator in there, we had to remove the dowels that support the side panel. Meaning you cannot actually fit a 420 millimeter radiator with the side panel. You have to choose either or. This to me is the most dishonest tactic a company could possibly use. If you say it will fit, it means it will fit with the case without modification. Nowhere in the manual does it give you a little asterisk without the dowels. This actually infuriated me a lot because I was planning this loop out. I had already bought radiators. I had my brackets ready. I was ready to go. And yet my case was not because it did not actually support what it claimed it supported. So I did the one thing that I do on this channel whenever something doesn't go my way, I uh, mod it. And so I did. I created a bracket that would support a radiator and would be able to have the side panel on. And that bracket was actually super easy to do. It was just a simple piece of aluminum channel that uh, we drilled into getting proper spacing and everything. It wasn't really that hard. At that point, I also decided to paint the case because I was going to fix Thermal Take's finish issue. And we painted the case. We got it all set up. You know, it was a bit of an experience for me because I used matte paint, which I don't normally use. And I actually missed a step that, again, I don't normally do because I don't normally use it. But after getting it all set up and done, it wasn't too, too bad. Like, I actually really liked the gray that we put on it, and I really liked the bracket and everything seemed fine, except we ran into a slightly different problem now. Upon building the system, I found out that there is no cable management at all in this case. None, zero. Thermal Take wants you to bundle your cables and just shove them back there. That wouldn't be a problem if the side panel assembled in a way that would be easy to put it on with your cables. But unfortunately, Thermal Take went with a much older and much cheaper method of installing your side panel, which involves a sort of weird outdated rail system that requires three hands to put on. Two to hold down the side panel and one to slide it. Essentially, because they cheaped out and they didn't use a more modern method, the panel itself is not easy to put on, especially not after you run custom cable extensions, not after you run a fully armed PSU with a lot of fan cables, RGB cables, everything to make this case look great. And it just, it became an issue. I ended up buying some command strips that are designed for uh, holding cables down to manage my cables in the back of this case. And it was after all of that, and after all that work I put in that I realized, you know what? This wasn't any easier. It wasn't any easier to build in this case than it was to build in a normal case. So why don't I just buy a big normal case and have a better experience than this? So yeah. That is so far my journey with this case. So, do I think that this case is okay on the market or belongs in the market? I think this case has an audience. I've seen a couple of builds in it and I've seen a couple of people who have been very adamant that they really do like this case. I've 
seen the comments, guys, I understand that there are some people who actually really do like it. But I'm not one of them. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This case back here, the one that for uh, Supernova, the O11 Dynamic XL pretty much has every feature that this case has. Minus the ability to run it open. But, in all honesty, you could run this case without its side panels and it'd be just as open. And pretty much that's what this is. You take the core of the O11 Dynamic and the O11 Dynamic XL, you remove all the side panels, and you've got this. Except it's a lot less stable because there are a lot of small problems with this case that only really appeared once we had a full system in it. One of them being the tempered glass side panel is too heavy for the metal dowels and it started to warp and bend. The feet aren't actually strong enough to hold a full system upright when you've got custom water cooling going in it. Thermals were great. I'm not gonna lie, like my fans ran at zero RPM, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. They're still running at zero RPM inside this giant chunky case that we've actually moved into. So while I want to like it, while I want to like the idea, I unfortunately don't think that Thermaltake is a company that's capable of making it. As weird as this sounds, every single Thermaltake case I have ever bought has been kind of the same. They all have weird problems. I had a Thermaltake Commander MS-1, I think it was. I remember because it was the red edition and it spelled out MSI when you took out the dash. Because it wasn't MSI branded, but it was MSI branded, if that makes sense. Essentially, the case was a mid-tower case with actually a lot of features, including, you know, hot swappable drive bays, uh, toolless installations, room in the back of the tra motherboard tray, all these kinds of things. Except Thermal Take didn't leave you enough room behind the motherboard tray to bundle those cables. So, yeah, you ended up with a weird situation there. And again, it's just like the same thing. Like they never seem to get the back of the PC right. They get the front okay, but they don't generally get the back. And it's just a weird thing. It's just weird to say that like, they just can't figure out cable management. Like everybody else has practically figured it out. Like Fractal's great. Lanley, you bundle them up, you put a cable management bar in front of it and boom, that system would have worked great in this case but it's not there. Now, you could be saying, I'm ragging on a case that's a couple years old, so of course new features, but Thermaltake's re-releasing it with a distribution plate for custom water cooling. And from what I can tell, there's still nowhere to hide your cables. <laughs> they still never fixed it. In fact, there's less room to hide your cables now. So, <laughs> honestly, I would not recommend this case. I would not recommend this case to anybody, except for those who are really, really, really looking for a case at this style, at this price point. But if you're gonna get a test bed, buy a test bed, honestly. If you're going to be buying it to be an open air case, get a test bed. Because what you're getting here is not really worth the headache. As a test bed, it actually sucks. Like, just flat out sucks. I, I keep pointing to this case. We're gonna talk about this one soon. But like, I'm not even joking when I say this. This case right here opens up just as wide as this one and was easier to build it. Because it had features that this one does not have. So, ironically, the more enclosed case ended up being the better one. And then one other thing to actually kind of like think about that Unfortunately, when I bought the case, I didn't have to think about. We adopted some uh, fur gremlins recently. They are adorable and I love them, but they shed. <laughs> and an open air system plus cats that shed. I ended up cleaning a lot of cat hair 
out of that PC before I shot the B-roll for the scissor reel that you guys ended up seeing in the actual build video. So there's also that. But overall, I think this was a lot clearer than my original rant on the Thermal Take Core P3. It's an okay case. But okay seems to be the only thing Thermal Take is actually good at. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you are interested in cases and case thingies, I do do videos on them fairly frequently, as weird as that sounds. Uh, generally speaking, I kind of, I, I get them in a lot because I'm always kind of experimenting with different cases. I actually have a Cooler Master half XB Evo, I think is what it's called, uh, that I'm actually going to be uh, messing around with soon. So uh, yeah, thank you guys again. Wolfie.